Greetings, plurds. Snappy World Insectivorous Plant Day. Ooh. Good day, insectivorous plantophiles. This is Derek DJ Frank coming to you from lovely Los Angeles, California, where I sort of run those fun Los Angeles Carnivorous Plant Society meetings. Today, we will be talking about Saracenia prophylaxis. Now, I don't imagine too many people have a collection quite out of, as out of control and overgrown and large as mine is. I'm assuming most have collections that are quite a bit smaller. However, it is important, no matter how big or small the collection, to do an annual, hopefully, prophylaxis of the plants to clean them up, to get them ready for the next season's growth, to remove pests, to divide and split, things like that. Now, unfortunately, my collection has gotten quite a bit out of control because it's been a couple of years since I've done that. So today we're going to go through and hopefully uh, take care of some of this and assuming I have end up getting it all done. At the end of the video, you'll see what it all looks like after I'm all done. But uh, after this, I will start just going into some individual plants and show you the various situations we may have that you're going to have to deal with with Saracenia. All right. Hopefully you're sitting down and let's go. Okay, so before we get started here, Let's take a look at uh, like some supplies. Good thing to have before you start your prophylaxis. Um, you'll need some things to be trimming the plants with and weeding them out. So we've got here a nice handy pair of scissors. Some more heavy duty clippers. Some tweezers for getting some small fine things. You're going to definitely, probably, almost certainly need some insecticides. Here's three different types, Immunox, Malathion, and Spinosad, which are uh, useful depending upon what you're most comfortable with or your needs are. And a spray bottle to spray them with. <clears throat> Have some potting mix already prepared, ready to go. I use a nice mix of four parts peat, one part perlite, one part pumice and one part sand and then have some pots so that's also useful so let's take a look at our first victim here this nice <clears throat> hybrid saracenia a lot of crossed with a dana's delight hybrid um, there's a couple of different ways we can approach this the first one we will start with is to just trim off the dead Parts. So we'll get to that in just a second here. Okay, so here we are now at the first one that we're going to do. First process is analysis to see what it needs. Now looking at the pot, the pot doesn't show any signs of distortion. So I'm not going to need to repot this Saracenia. Um, probably next year I can see that there's a couple of guys that are near the edge here. Um, but they haven't yet started to distort. But it clearly has weeds in it, dead leaves, leaves that are from last year, old seed pots, things like that. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at these old dead ones. And a lot of times these ones, you can just yank on them and then they'll just pop right off sometimes. Not always. Like that one didn't want to come off. So if they don't come off easily, then don't rip them off because you could damage the plant. Let's see that came off. Um, the other thing we have is we have damaged leaves, so those we'll remove. And we've got leaves that are mostly green and brown and then some brown up there. So like I said, there's two ways to do it. We can clear cut or we can try and save the green. So let's on this one we're gonna uh, just save as much green as possible so the scissors are handy because you can just snip those guys right off 
the dead ones that are hard to get out like this, we want to get in there as close to the base as possible and just cut that and take him out. The old flower stalks, those usually come off pretty easily. You can save the flower stalks if you want some seed, generally, um, even if you haven't pollinated them, they'll have found some way of getting pollinated so you can save the seed pods for doing later stuff. Then you got these guys that are like damaged like that. So best thing on that is let's get down in there and just clip him off right at the base. There's another damaged one. Now we've also got some weeds in here. So weeds, easy enough. You just yank on them. Shake the soil, as much of the soil off as you can. Yep, drop him on the ground. Again, just yank them out. And there he goes on the ground. And now if weed is really difficult to get out, you can always uh, either take your scissors or guys like this and get down just underneath the soil level and just clip. And a lot of times that'll take care of enough roots that you can then pull them out. So generally just pulling weeds out is the best thing. All right, so that's what we're going to do to this one. Let me go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so here we are after the trimming. You can see that I've cut off tops of some. So the brown parts I've cut off. We still have lots of green plant left. The weeds are mostly gone. And one thing I took a look at uh, I did not notice any pests or anything in this plant. Generally, this technique, if you don't have an issue with pests, is pretty good um, and a good way to maintain your Saracenia. If you do discover that you've got pests such as mealybugs or thrips, uh, the better method is to do a clear cut. But for now, this guy, he's good the way he is. We can see here he's just starting up some flower buds. So I am a little bit behind schedule. Ideally, you'd like to be doing this before the flower buds are starting to pop up. So the best time is eh, December. Uh, it's January right now. Certainly, if we can, we can do this in the Southern California area, January, February. February is really pushing it. March is really, really pushing it. You can do this at any time of year, but obviously it sets the plant back the later in the year that you do it. You may not have good plants that year, uh, and you may need to wait a year then for it to uh, recover. So that's what this one looks like after doing that work on it. Okay, here's one that's a particular challenge. We'll show you here's what it looks like to start with. And I am going to do a trim up on this and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so we are now about halfway through. You can see all of the clearing out that's been done here. And it's looking like this is close to being needing to be repotted. It's getting pretty packed in here, but I think I can still get one more season out of it. So let's see how let's see how it looks when I finish it up. Okay, so here we are. This is what it looks like after getting its hair cut. We've kept as much of the green as we can and cleared it out. There's still a couple of grasses in here, but it's very hard to get that stuff out. And this particular grass isn't that much of a nuisance. But you can see things are a lot more open and clear. And this is very important because... When you have it uh, very dense like it was before, that gets a lot of places for pests to hide. Opened up like this, there's really not much place for the pests to hide. There's not nooks and crannies and things like that. So, 
Okay, nice looking uh, Lucafla Tarnock now, ready to go for the new season. Okay, here's another one we're going to take a quick look at. You can see it's really quite overgrown like the others. But if we look here, we can see the pot has a big crack in it and the plant's trying to escape here. This is a sign that this plant needs to be repotted and divided. So we'll go into that. First, we'll start with cleaning it up. Okay, so here's what it looks like now after it's been cleaned up. You can see the pot has been distorted and it's been broken on the side. So we're going to set this guy off with our other ones that need to be repotted so we can do them all at once. And we'll come back to that in a bit when we reach that point. Okay, here we have a pot of Dana's Delight, very overgrown. I've decided I'm going to clear cut this one and here is why. Let's get in close here. Uh, if you see things like this on your leaves, there's that like whitish thing. It looks kind of like a powder or a mildew or something. Um, generally, my experience is that's indicative that thripes have been coming in. Now, there's also this right here. There's a scale. There's some more thrips, some more thrip evidence. So I found... And here, right here, you can see in this little crevice here. Where is that? There it is, right there. Um, that's very indicative of thrips. <clears throat> and when you get that, uh, there's lots of places on the plant that they can hide, generally inside the pitchers and things like that, too. So in this case, it's best to just clip everything off, every leaf off. Uh, so this will get a clear cutting. We'll take a look at what that looks like in a minute. And here it is now, clear cut. We can see a very, very healthy amount of rhizomes. And I think I might have said this was a Dana's Delight. It's actually a Leah Wilkerson. And as we can see, it's also clambering out of this pot. So I might need to do some repotting on that. We'll handle that in a little bit. But this is what it should look like after you've gotten it all clear cut. As mentioned earlier, there's two ways you can go about cleaning up your Saracenia. You can just cut off the brown parts of the leaves, or you can do a clear cutting. Uh, it's really pretty much up to you which you prefer. However, there is a situation in which you absolutely must clear cut, and that's if you've discovered any pests, because pests can hide inside the leaves, inside the pitchers, inside any curls in the leaves, down in the rhizomes, places like that. Um, so here's one thing that you want to look for and that is to see if there's any thrip damage because thrips can be pretty nasty little fellows and I can see on this leaf right here you can see there's that whitish thing on the leaf that's usually pretty indicative that you've got some thrips going on there let's see if I can zoom in on that sometimes the camera doesn't focus right but let's see maybe I can get it to do what it needs to do there we go Okay, so it kind of looks like that. If you've got that white modeling on your leaves, definitely clear cut all your leaves uh, and then give them a shot of insecticide. And here's how it looks after we've clear cut it. It's pretty nice. The things that I left in there are an orchid. So I left those orchid leaves and there's a little flower slot uh, guy coming up there. Now here's why you, the prophylaxis is important, especially if you're doing your own pollination and crossbreeding of Saracenia. Um, I hadn't done this in at least uh, two years. So last winter, basically last winter, I didn't do any cleanup or anything like that with the plants. And you can see I've got quite a number of seedlings that we did all right with, but you can see here's the graveyard of all the plants that basically got shaded out by weeds or other more robust plants. So if, you know, you think about it, you did all the work to pollinate plants, you do all the work to germinate the seeds, all the work to get them going um, and potting them up into individual pots and then you neglect them for one season and boom, you probably lose about 
as I'm, my estimate, my guesstimate here would be about half of the plants, more or less. So that's another reason why it's kind of important to take care of this stuff. And here we are with the prophylaxis of the collection complete. You can see things have been really rearranged, move around. They look a lot less crazy and overgrown. I did take the opportunity to move a lot of plants around and kind of have to separate them into various spots uh, and segregate them into plants that do not need to be repotted, such as these guys over here and these guys over here. And then I moved other ones into a section like these guys here that will need to be repotted. And these guys over here, that'll need to be repotted. And maybe that can be the subject of next year's video, Repotting Saracenia. And that might give me an opportunity to talk about scales and mealybugs this time around. Really, all I came across were thrips. Usually I find mealybugs and scales, but I didn't this year. Uh, scales often are ha handled the same way you handle thrips, cutting off the leaves, because that's usually where they are. But mealybugs get down deep into the rhizome and they need a more intensive treatment, uh, which involves repotting uh, and dunking in pesticide and things like that. And we can handle that next year if I happen to see mealybugs when I'm repotting. And let's see, things just look a lot nicer, don't they? And so with that plurds, we bid you a fond adieu from the lair of the Fekmanari tribe, home of all these wonderful Saracenia. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your world insectivorous plant day. Celebrate it in an appropriate fashion. Go out and order a large pizza with extra flies on it. Adios. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.